Hello peeps and welcome to a new short series, Builders of Egypt, the prologue. As some of you may or may not know, I am a huge fan of a game called Pharaoh. It's quite an old game, it was a game that I did plan to play on my channel not long after I finished Theme Hospital. I then found out about the development of this game, formerly known as Hard Ancient Life and now renamed Builders of Egypt. I came to discover that it is basically the same game, just a modernised version and have been following its progress ever since. For anybody who doesn't know Pharaoh or Children of the Nile, this is a city builder game with economic strategy. And it is, of course, set in Egypt, but in ancient Egypt. This little prologue, which is a small taster of the game, was released back in March this year. And I did play it at that time, but thought I would wait for the full game before I introduced it to my channel. Clearly, I changed my mind. <laughs> The developers, Strategy Labs, have confirmed that the game is due at the beginning of next year and I am terribly excited and I simply couldn't wait any more. <laughs> so, so in this short series we will play through the entire prologue until our mission is complete and find out uh, the small beginnings of what this game has to offer. A glorious capital for Kemet. The ruler of Upper Egypt, King Nama, conquered Lower Egypt and united the kingdom on the Nile. Now the country needs capital. King Aha, Nama's successor, sends you to Memphis, Ineb Hedge, to supervise the construction of this magnificent city, a political, administrative and religious centre which will become home to the royal family and thanks to its monumentality will strengthen its authority. There is a small tutorial at the beginning of this campaign, but I shall whip us through it quite quickly as I have played it before. So we can see up here that we have bread and we have beer. And it says here that um, the idea of currency was unknown uh, in ancient Egypt. So they were paid in bread and beer. So this is going to be the currency uh, for this game. So the first thing we're going to do is build roads and we've got this little symbol here that is house and roads um, and it's saying uh, in the tutorial of course that um, the first main resource is going to be water so building by uh, water um, is uh, a good way to have a strong start to a new settlement. So we're going to build these roads where the tutorial uh, wants us to uh, place them. Here we go, like so, excellent. And then we need to uh, build our houses. So it's the same one over here, houses and roads, and um, all buildings must be placed adjacent to a road uh, in order for access. We can also uh, rotate these. And you can see what I like about them is they're like little small, uh, little small huts, uh, which I uh, kind of uh, like. Um, so we're just going to do them in a lovely sort of neighbourhood orientation. <laughs> I've done that one wrong. Never mind. There we go. That will do. Um, and we can see here we've got like these. There's nobody living in them. But it says up here that uh, placing these buildings will encourage immigrants to settle in the uh, city. Um, so you can see here we've got like this little entrance way. And here they come. They're on their way. Look, you can even click on them. And it gives you their name. Oh, oh my goodness. And we, it looks like we can even rename them. That is amazing. Good to know. <laughs> I think we can all see the direction that will go in when we come to play the full uh, version of the game. Now, the arrival of immigrants, uh, we can see that we get uh, a little incoming message down here. Um, so we do get little messages. Uh, this is such a nice little animation. Dwellers are coming to the city. Um, so you can go and see them, but we've already done that, so we're just going to accept this. That's absolutely that's absolutely fine. We'll close that again. Now you can demolish buildings. That's what that is saying here. But it is saying that removing buildings at a later stage can uh, become uh, tricky and can shatter the delicate economic balance, and that is very true. Uh, I always found in Pharaoh that it wasn't really worth redesigning as you went along. Uh, it really wasn't. It was worth just uh, uh, sticking with what you what you've got um so 
Anyway, it's saying that we don't need this bit of road, so we've got the demolish button here and we can just uh, smash away at it. There we go, to get rid of it. Now, a fire station. It wants us to build a fire station to protect our dwellers here against that fire, of course. Administrative buildings. What do we have here? Fire station. We can see that we've also got some other buildings to come, but for now we shall uh, pop this in here. Let's put it in this orientation. There it is. Excellent. And we can see that when we click on this uh, fire station, it gives us an idea of the radius in which it is um, effective. Of course, the closer they are, the more effective it is. If they're out on the outer part of the ring, we can see here the green fades. So, um, you know, if they're out here, it's not very effective um, in uh, stopping a fire if it starts and all that sort of business. So you probably want to place them um, sort of quite close distances to each other, um, yeah. So maybe you'd want one right on the edge of this ring just to double up in this center area um, for good coverage indeed. Um, and what's nice about clicking on these buildings is that we can see there's no warnings with this building. It requires six workers to have its full effectiveness. And it also uh, has like all these risk factors. We can uh, stop it from working. We can shut it down, all this sort of stuff. You can even find out all sorts of information about the houses. Uh, as as well and you can see that we've got a, a range here I think this is the distance in which um, uh, the dwellers living in these properties will go for resources and work and shop and, and all that sort of stuff it gives you an idea of how far they are willing uh, to travel and again um, we've got all sorts of information by clicking on our little dwelling here about the uh, the property um, how many dwellers it can fit how many available workers there are the risks what it's what's required for an upgrade here it says access to a well all the different types of foods they can have wheat meat fish lettuce figs pomegranates chickpeas pottery um, they like to have straw and linen papyrus and uh, jewelry um, and also being able to have access to uh, temples and and entertainment physicians dentists courts libraries sc scribe schools all these sorts of things and um, the more they have of these things the more um, these houses upgrade I think there's going to be something like 17 levels that they can upgrade um, and they turn into like small palaces uh, they certainly did in Pharaoh I suspect this will be no no different at all so we can find out um, all about our buildings uh, by clicking on them Oh yes, here it's mentioning now that this this range here is indeed what determines the maximum distance to the building in which a dweller can work. Um, so in the case of hard to reach workplaces such as mines, it is worth considering building a work camp, which is a mostly self-sufficient unit. So that's good. That's good to know. So this is about how far they are willing to travel for work more than anything else. So that is good to know. Now, of course, we did note that to upgrade this house, we need to build a well. Um, so let's do that, shall we? It would like us to build one here in the tutorial. Sanitary, sanitary. Look at here. We've got like this well. I don't know which is the best way to have this. Uh, this looks pretty good, doesn't it? With the pots at the back, maybe. Yeah, let's let's pop it that way. There we go. Ah, look, there's all these people walking around, spending time at their home so this one's sitting down oh my goodness there we go so building the well meant that they did indeed upgrade that's what just happened there they have upgraded to level uh, two um, which is great and it says here needed for upgrade one type of food so this this uh, this is really good we we can see um progress already it is also worth noting that if we removed this well they would downgrade back to their little hut so you don't want to take you can't add something, wait for them to upgrade, remove it, and they stay upgraded. That doesn't work either. They do have to have a maintained access uh, to the thing that has allowed them to upgrade. 
Now, this is an important part of the tutorial. It talks about production chains and that uh, each uh, city needs an organized production for its growth, starting from the production of basic resources necessary for the upgrades of the houses. We're being uh, told here to build a clay pit. So this will be good for uh, jobs, but also uh, getting resources. Um, I think we might stick it on this orientation. There we go. Excellent. Um, and we know that we have uh, lots of um, uh, peoplings, we're going to be calling them, that can uh, have uh, jobs here. And we can see with these icons that are above, uh, it's telling us um, available workers. This is the available workers icon. Um, so we've got five available workers out of seven. Um, uh, because this has actually started to fill up. Well, we know that amongst all of these peoplings, Eight of them are now working at the clay pit. It says here workers eight out of eight, which means its effectiveness is 100%. So um, there is a minimal amount, so you can have less peoplings working. Uh, it just wouldn't be as efficient. Um, yeah, that's, that, that is the thing. And we can see how far along the production is that's going. And each time a production completes, I'm pretty sure you get 100 of that particular unit out of the building so in this case it'd be 100 clay and we can see here that it can store up to 200 clay uh, before it can't produce any more so this is where stockpiles come in of course um, so that we can you know keep everything safe so if we come back into these buildings stockpile and this is so oh, oops I put that in the wrong place this is so classic pharaoh um, I'm really annoyed that I've put that in the wrong place oh well yeah so classic pharaoh um, and we can see here uh, how much is in stock. We do actually have 10 out of 10 workers, which is amazing. We've only got one carrier though. And all these different wares are listed that you can have in the game. It's all here, all the different things that we can have. Um, look, we've even got all these different types of stones, sandstone, plain stone, limestone, granite, gold, copper, uh, turquoise, flax, barley, reeds, it's all there and you can control how much of it um you, you know what you want this particular uh, stockpile uh, to do with things i'm going to say don't take anything and then uh, we can say take all the clay and this number here um this will store you'll see here we now have 100 clay in stock here 100 and each one of these squares can store up to 400 and then we have a whole bunch of squares here um, so if this was filled with clay it would amount to 4800 clay so you can uh, really dictate uh, how much that this can hold so if you don't want it to hold any more than say 500 pots you could say yes uh, take them but no but but max out at 500 which becomes very important much later in the game uh, if you want everything to run smoothly and efficiently. The stockpile also doesn't have um, a max range. Um, they can take and send stocks to and from across the entire city, uh, if you so wish them to. So continuing our product uh, production chain, we are now going to come into wares and build a brick maker. Uh, let's spin this round there we go look at the detail of this the amount of research into these things has been has been really really great really really great so at the moment this says no resources uh, but we can see here at the bottom that it'll require 200 clay but it's also going to require 200 straw in order to make 200 bricks so that's worth bearing in mind so even though um they have come along look there you go and they've put in 200 clay here these guys can't actually then uh, make the bricks just at the moment. Uh, this says uh, basic information. Some production buildings require specific conditions or locations. Wells, wells must be built by the river, quarries by the hills, and woodcutters require forests, which may be depleted if you devastate the entire woodland. Uh, makes uh, complete sense, of course. So we discovered earlier that our houses are going to require one type of food to upgrade further. So the game is encouraging us to build a fishing wharf. So we're going to come into food production, fishing wharf. Um, look, we can uh, build anywhere along this road. Um, do you know, I think I will place it there. Um, and 
now it's telling us that when food is collected it needs to come to a granary which is like a, a massive storage place for all the different types of food that you produce um, it holds a lot of food um, so we're going to pop that here um, I think, oh, the game's telling me where it wants me to look okay we'll come back to there in a minute um, but they don't sell food from here they sell foods through bazaars local bazaars so this is where um, uh, it's like like your shop right so we're going to place a small bazaar bazaar here so this is sort of how how the food process works it's produced it comes to a granary and then the granary helps um, stock bazaars um, makes sense right uh, so this is where the huge food storage is if we click on here you can see that it does hold a massive amount of food up to 3200 units so pretty important pretty important um, and uh, the bazaar mind you the bazaar <laughs> holds quite a lot but you would want to have a nice mixture of different things in a bazaar uh, you, you certainly would um, so that the houses um, particularly at high levels are going to want uh, paper and linen and, and all these separate things so you're going to want to make sure they're able to get them from their local bazaar. Now it talks about economy a little bit here the finished wares can be used to build a monument if the mission requires it uh, because in fairy you could build huge pyramids and I believe that's going to be pyramids and monuments and things like that which uh, I believe is going to be no different with this game I think we're going to be able to build those things I used to love building the huge pyramids there were so many different types and Wow, they were just amazing to look at. Um, or it can be traded away. Uh, to do this, you need to set up a trade route. Um, so we can see here we have the region map that we can come and visit. And we can see um, what cities were available up and down the Nile at the particular time in history that we are. Um, so our city is, uh, is here. This is our city. Um, which is nice and we've got like these little things here to say that we can't uh, trade with them also like these masks this suggests that we're not uh, enemies with anybody and we're not particularly friendly with anybody e either we are neutral with everybody in Pharaoh there was a war mechanic uh, there were armies and stuff like that and I'm hoping that we'll also have that in this game um, but they haven't talked about that just at the moment um, but here this one doesn't have a uh, you can't trade here so we're going to click on this so we can um, trade with this village we can open up a trade route and we can see here that they wish to buy 1200 bricks and how much they're willing to pay in bread and they'd also like to buy 700 clay and how much they're willing to pay in bread uh, they're not selling anywhere for us to buy um, so we're going to open this uh, trade route it's going to cost us 200 bread to do it that's absolutely fine we'll do that uh, thank you very much and what this means is that from time to time a trader will uh, walk to our our um, city or a ship will come down the Nile to our city something like that to come and trade um, the wares uh, that have been arranged here and it says here that if a trader exchanges all of his goods during the year he will not arrive again until the next one it says here you must first determine whether you want to import export or do nothing the default option blocks the possibility to import and export uh, to change it click the economy uh, tab icon here um, so you can see this is this is where it all is um, so here we could say you know export clay but we we're not trading with anybody that uh, buys it oh no that's not true <laughs> this this village does want the clay well we're not going to trade it just yet we're going to say um, that we're happy to export all the bricks uh, for the moment and then we'll worry about the clay later we want the clay for now of course to uh, make the bricks um, and uh, so let's head back to the city and that is the tutorial over and done with and we are now free to uh, play the mission now we can come up uh, to this icon here mission description and we can remind ourselves what the win conditions are um, so it says here that we need to gather a whole bunch of bread uh, we need to export a whole bunch of bricks um, we need to gather a whole bunch of pottery and we need to have up to 200 um, dwellers and with this done we then win uh, this prologue edition so that's what we're going to be doing here today oh look this here this is our trader look he is coming by foot he's returning back home because of course we haven't got anything um, to trade with him just yet because of course we don't have straw we do not have straw um, uh, to make the bricks it's a problem now 
we we want straw so we're going to come into food production um and build uh some farms here um so these are wheat farms um we're going to pop a couple down now again we must remember that these buildings will not work uh without um a road uh, attached so we are going to there we go and now we'll see that um it's uh, not saying anything about roads uh, but workers instead which is absolutely fine in fact workers probably is a bit of an issue um, we probably do need um, some some workers yeah look available workers none everybody is working which um which is a good thing of course uh, so let's get some more houses down do you know what we are probably just going to repeat uh, right here uh, what we've already got. I'm hoping we'll be able to explore all the bits and bobs currently available here. Um, right, so with these built um, we'll uh, start to notice a whole bunch of new immigrants arriving and we might even get a new message about incoming dwellers pop up uh, soon. So I'm going to uh, wait uh, for dwellers to move in here and see if... Uh oh look! They're flooding. This is what we we do get the flood plains. Oh, this is great. So at a certain time of year, the fields flood, and then they are more fertilised um, the following year to grow crops. Um, and in Pharaoh, uh, you'd be able to set up temples and worship certain gods, which could help improve um, and have better fertilised lands the following years. Uh, and all that sort of stuff you know there was different gods that you could worship for for different benefits uh so um i'm fully expecting all of that to be part of this game as well that's really really cool so they couldn't even work in the fields just at the moment anyway um but that's okay because we're waiting for them to uh move in uh to their the traders back move in uh to their new homes anyway the fishing wharf has some fish coming from it yeah look he is carrying fish. Excellent. Because we're very keen to start getting food um, out to our people, of course. Uh, very important. Uh, because, of course, these will start to upgrade, as we can see here, with access to one type of food. Is this an upgraded one? I think it might be. Yeah, look, this is level three now. And this is going to need access to a temple to upgrade uh, further. I don't know. Are we going to... Ooh, faith... We've got shrines, but not temples. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, so we can see that uh, they are moving in bit by bit. We can see here, this is our total number of inhabitants uh, to the island. Oh, look at all these guys. Going for where? <laughs> I think for where's, because uh, we have the bazaar here. So with fish available in the granary, they're going to want the fish. Uh, actually in the bazaar so we did see momentarily there there was one available worker he instantly got a job so <laughs> this is uh, going very well uh, there seems to be plenty of jobs out there see that again we had one um, so it'll be interesting to see once they've all moved in and these have upgraded as much as they're going to upgrade um, how many jobs uh, how many workers we will have available <laughs> We have reached a milestone, a milestone settlement. That must be because we've just hit a hundred inhabitants. Um, look, we've got eight available, nine available workers. They're still coming in. So we have got a, a few workers. So we should see, um, oh no, we, uh, we not, we're not ready yet, are we? Really, I'm looking forward um, to seeing the straw uh, come uh, so that we can start making the bricks and selling them but of course the fields are still uh, flooded here it is the farm is almost finished producing its wheat this is 41 wheat doesn't seem like masses does it this has a hundred 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 okay and they seem to be uh, producing two straw each that is great. Here comes the straw from the fields. Excellent. Lots of straw. That's what we need. 
the straw is being delivered to the storage yard. There it is. And instantly <laughs> it's being taken to this brick maker. So they will have their clay and they'll have their 200 straw and then they can start to produce their bricks. 200 bricks we're hoping which will then be stored uh, in here um, even though this is set to take all it's just to give uh, an, an idea here so at the moment we're filling everything up with clay but we're going to take this down by um, another thousand um, so that we can put a thousand there's always room for a thousand bricks in there because of course we want to sell our bricks to that merchant that comes there it is there's the straw. They can finally get to work on producing their bricks. There we go. We can see bricks. Bricks have been produced. It's probably our first uh, 100 bricks. We're working uh, on the next 100. Don't know. Because we saw one clay disappear here. It says they've got. Oh, it's just been topped up again. It says they've got six out of two straw here and two out of two clay. I thought this was a hundred clay and this was a hundred clay, but maybe not. The bricks have gone. Where did the bricks go? Oh my goodness, look, they're here. And there'll be certain missions, of course, uh, in the final game where these bricks will then be used to build large uh, monuments and temples, you know, like stepped temples and things like that. Oh my god, it's going to be so good. Think how many bricks do you'll need to produce for that. Here comes our merchant running <laughs> to our city here. It's pretty small, our city, but he is absolutely on his way. There he is. And he bought these bricks, 150 bread, which is great because, of course, we've just paid wages and lost bread to do it. Um, so we are now finally uh, making bread. <laughs> Ah, uh, there you go. He's just bought those other bricks that were just delivered as well. So 300 bread. Thank you very much, trader. We can see here he's now purchased 200 of his 1,200 bricks that he is keen to purchase. Great. Well then, I think we'll call it there. And in the uh, next episode, we'll see about placing those shrines, see if they'll work uh, for this uh, in this little demo that we have. And and start expanding our little empire and checking out all the other bits and bobs that we have here. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all my Patreons for their continued support.